This is Frank Warren, and you're watching Lights Out. This is Fessel Khan for Lights Out, and with me via Zoom, delighted to be joined by Liam the Machine Williams. Liam, good evening to you, my man. How's it going? All good, mate. All good. Uh, as I was just saying, there, I'm just in Sheffield now, just chilling. Been a hard day, so just putting my feet up, watching some TV, for Netflix. Get my feet bitten by the dog. It's been a while since we um, we last spoke to you, and obviously, I believe the last time we spoke to you was, or well, when we done an interview with you face to face. We'd have to go back all the way to last year when you fought Atlantis Fox, and a lot has happened since then in terms of the the, pand- the pandemic. You know, the whole lockdown, coronavirus situation. You fought once, um, a good performance against Andrew Robinson, a good victory as well. The question that now remains is when is that fight with Demetrius Andrade going to take place? Because I believe you've been mandatory now for a very, very long time. Eddie Hearn also confirmed that is Andrade's next fight against yourself. Mm-hmm. How do you expect to see that fight happening? Uh, <clears throat> I'm told it's happening in February. So, in terms of dates, I've not really got anything else to tell you, but. Um, February is good for me. Early, late, whatever. Just, just tell me the date, and, and I'll be ready. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but what I am doing, I'm staying in the gym, keep myself fit and active, um, because I don't want them trying to spring any any dates on me, which I'm not comfortable with. Like, I'm not, I'm not one to say, oh, I need, you know, I need a couple more weeks or. I'll just, I'll just be ready when that time comes. You've been the, the mandatory now for, for quite a while for Demetrius Andrade's world title. Why has it taken so long for that fight to actually happen? I mean, what's been keeping yourself from getting in the ring with Demetrius Andrade? I think, the, I think your question should be, what's keeping him from getting in the ring with me? He's right. fucking... He's just... He just obviously have not fancied the job, as he? Like, obviously, he knows he's going to have his hand full. Um, look, he's quality. There's, there's no two ways about it. He's a good fighter. But I just don't think he fancies the job against me. And um, he knows in the back of his head there's a very good chance that he's going to beat. So, um, he's obviously chose to take other routes and avoid me for as long as he can. But uh, his time is up now. Of course, it's a fight that's been ordered as well by the WBO now, so it is 100% going to happen. At the back of your mind, is there any feelings that you think Demetrius Andrade might actually vacate? Or do you think there could be anything else that could potentially stop in this fight from happening? Because it is a fight that's been brewing for a long time now. Yeah, I, um, I think... Well, they're saying he's going to fight me next year, so hopefully that... Sorry, mate, my phone's gone off there. Um, so I think and I'm hoping that's going to be the next fight um, because I, I want to go and... For me to become world champion, I want to go and take that belt away from the champion. Um, and to do in his country as though would be, would be special for me. And... Um, I'm sure I would get more credit than the credit I deserve for going to do that. So, yeah, we'll see. But I wouldn't if um, I'm here for the the title. <clears throat> Sorry, it's all right. No, you've had a you've had a, a very very long day at the gym. This fight with Demetrius Andrade. Um, obviously, I'm pretty sure you're aware that. He'll have to be going over to America to fight him. He'll be on a matchroom show. We all know that it's difficult to get a judge's decision in another country. How confident are you, not only of beating Demetrius Andrade, but how confident are you of also knocking him out as well on the night? Because we know if it goes to a judge's decision, they're more likely to favour the home fighter instead of the away fighter. <clears throat> Listen, either way, uh, I don't plan on making a close fight. 
I just feel like I'm going to go and I'm going to beat him up and smash him. And then, you know, even if it does go a distance, which I can't see yet, um, I don't want to. I don't want to be in a position where I can leave it to the to the judges to even question who's the winner. I want to go there and, and really make an example of him and and beat him. So there's there's no way of getting robbed. They're just going to be, you know, there's only going to be one winner in my eyes. As we know, he's a you know he's a world champion. He's an elite level fighter. What sort of game plan do you take into fighting a fighter like Demetrius Andrade, who you've mentioned in the past has not really fought anyone like yourself? Yeah, exactly. Mate. Obviously, can't be saying too many things because we've got a job to do, and and um, you know we've got a game plan to to keep. You know, we've got to keep our cards close to our chest. Then, but we've seen things which. Which we feel that we can we can work on, we can exploit, and I definitely think he's he's going to be in some big trouble. He's um, he can be very reckless, uh, or is like he's, he's off balance a lot. He throws himself off balance, um, and I think in his mind he thinks he's a bigger puncher than what he actually is. Because let's be honest, uh, going back to his last fight, though. Was it Luke? Yeah, Luke Keeler. Keeler, yeah. He hit Luke Keeler with everything and couldn't knock him out. I can assure you, if I hit Luke Keeler with them same shots, he would have been sleeping. So, it says a lot, really. Well, from my point of view, I just don't believe. If you're, if you're any good puncher, As, as I mentioned, you know, there's a potential chance he could vacate. There's a number of things that could stop this fight from potentially happening. Has there been, like, perhaps a plan B or a plan C been put in motion to, if the fight doesn't happen, there's another fight that you could move on to? Because I know there's a fight that you've always been interested in, and that's a fight with Chris Eubank Jr. Now, Chris Eubank Jr. said on many interviews in the past couple of weeks, he's expected to make an announcement soon for his next fight. Nothing's been said from his mind. Is there like another plan for you just in case this fight with Demetrius Andrade doesn't happen? No, there is no other plan because I'm I'm certain that my my fight, my next fight is gonna be for that title. So um unless something drastic happens and, and things really just spin on head then At the, as far as I'm concerned, that's my next fight, and I've got all concentration on that fight. So, unless, as I said, unless anything changes um, quite rapidly, then I don't, I don't see any point in wasting my time elsewhere. 2021 is a big year for you. I'm pretty sure there's going to be loads of big fights you're looking to land yourself in, and the fight you've always been interested in is Chris Eubank Jr. You've said, you know, from the very beginning, that's a fight you've always wanted. Um, why has that fight not happened? Because you know, as I mentioned, it's a fight you've wanted for a very long time and it's a fight you're very confident of winning. And Chris Eubank Jr. isn't the most of active fighters these days as well. Yeah, it's just one of them. And I, you you know, um, obviously, you know yourself being involved in boxing. The fights you want don't always come. They can't be made for whatever reason. Different promoters, TV channels, managers... So much, so much bullshit goes on, you know. Um, but th- that is definitely a fight I would love. Um, yes, yeah, a fight I would love. I'd like to go and beat Andrade. And who knows? You know, I- I'm pretty sure that um, Eubank would definitely fancy his chances because I've got something to offer him. Um, although he's not really got anything to offer me other than a, a decent name, which he hasn't actually built for himself as his own man's name. So. Um, other than that, he's not got a great deal off me right now because I'm in a good position to go and win a WBO world title. Well, like I said, fingers crossed that these big fights do happen in 2021, especially after the year we've had uh, so far. Yeah, what was your thoughts on Daniel Dubois versus Joe Joyce at the weekend? And what's your thoughts on everyone claiming that 
when he took a knee, he quit and pulled himself out of the fight. What, 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 what's your what's your say on it? Well, do you know I only actually watched the fight? Yeah, either yesterday, or Monday, or Monday or yesterday. So I thought I thought uh, Dubois was boxing well. He was winning the fight. Um, Joyce was starting to come back into the fight a little bit, but. It's just an unfortunate injury, isn't it? And, um, you know, honestly, I think that if if he didn't have that injury, he would have he would have cruised it home and, and got the win. But, you know, it's boxing and it's a hurt game. It, it did happen and there's no two ways around it. So, fair play to Joyce. Um, I respect Joyce. He's a good fighter and um, seriously tough man. So, you know, he put a lot into that fight and, and I, I believe he deserved to come away with a win. He, he done what he had to do, so fair play to him. Do you think that the criticism that Daniel Dubois is receiving right now is unfair because, as you said, it's the hurt game. You all know how serious an eye injury is in boxing. I mean, I know a good friend of yours, Kel Brook, has suffered from two broken eye sockets. It's, it was a very serious injury that Dubois suffered in the fight. What's your take on yeah. the criticism that he's receiving right now? I don't really know. I don't. I don't feel like um, any any fighters and anybody who steps in the ring. I don't believe they should be getting, you know, people abusing them and getting shit online. And I don't think it's fair, really, because it takes a lot of balls to get in the ring. And you know, especially he just fought uh, Joyce, who's who's a very big, strong. Man, you know, so he just credit for that. Um, I know they he was maybe a little bit disrespectful in some in some press conferences and whatnot, but kind of building a fight. That I don't think he should be getting that kind of stick. To be honest, he was not nice. He's he's a fighter. Um, he's a hard grafter, and he's a tough man. He just come up. He was just a bit unfortunate. He had a bad injury, and um, you do. Nobody really knows the ins and outs of the injury. Um, you don't know what was going through his head. You don't I don't believe he would have just bottled it and quit. You know, there was obviously... I feel there would have been good reason behind it. They must have... He must have been in serious pain, I'm guessing. And, and he thought, like, you know, kind of lived the fight another day would be the sensible thing to think if, if he thought he seriously had a bad injury, you know? Hundred um, percent. There's a couple of different ways to look at it. But I would never, I would never call him a quitter or a shit out. So it's just it is what it is. Either way, it was it was a great fight, and I think both of them deserve a lot of credit for putting up the fight that they did, especially with the amount of times it kept on getting postponed and rescheduled. Um, December nineteenth, another guy that you're interested in is Canelo. Um, he takes on Callum Smith, a fellow British super middleweight fighter. December the 19th in the Alamo Dome in Texas. What chances do you give of Callum Smith winning that fight come December the 19th, Liam? I actually give him a decent... I don't think... I think Canelo's going to win the fight. Um, yeah, I think Canelo's going to win the fight. But, on the other hand, I wouldn't be totally shocked if, if Callum Smith pulled off the upset because... He's a, he's a lot bigger than Canelo, massive for the weight, um, and and you know putting that aside, he's got all the skills in the book as well, and he's, he's very good, and he's he's the champion he is for a reason, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Makes for a great fight, though, and it's good to see. I mean, Callum Smith, December nineteenth. Hopefully, yourself in February. You know, a lot of the belts potentially be coming back to Britain. Liam. 168 is, I mean, currently you're at 160. Have you ever thought about perhaps maybe one day challenging up at 168 as well? 100% is definitely something I'll end up doing. Um, obviously, I've only been at 160 for uh, 18 months, maybe 18, 20 months, I think, off the top of my head. Uh, but it's definitely something I think I could make. Uh, make 160 for a long time now because I'm comfortable 
but this is something I'd like to do. I like a bit of a challenge, uh, and yeah, I'd be open. To, I'd be open to fights for you know anywhere from one five four to one six eight. I'm, I like a challenge, even if it makes me, even if it means me making a lower weight as one five four. But either way, it's a good challenge, and I'm always up for, for taking the chances. There's so many big fights out there for you at 154, 160, and even at 168. 2021 is going to be a big year for you. You know, you're hoping to start off with challenging for the world title. Who is it? Who is it? If, if you had to pick three fights for yourself next year, who would the three, the three fights be that you'd want to see yourself in the ring with next year? You know, there's the Charlos, there's Golovkin, Canelo, there's Callum Smith, you know, there's Benavides, Kader Plant, there's even Billy Joe Saunders who... You know, you've shared the gym with in the past. Uh, Who are the three main fights for yourself in 2021? If I can name three, uh, it would obviously be the biggest in my division. It would be Canelo, Golovkin and, and Charlo. Fingers crossed these are fights to get to see happen. What was your thoughts on Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. Uh, last weekend, Liam? To be honest with you, mate, I didn't watch it. I've um, seen a couple of like little reels on, on Instagram and that. Um, what I've seen, it just looked like a, just an old Mike Tyson. Not, I don't want to be, you know, he can do what he wants to do, yeah? It's, anybody can. And I've always been a massive fan. I still am a massive fan. But looking at it, it's kind of a little bit embarrassing because people are doing these comparison photos of him leaving the ring, entering the ring and stuff. And I um, just think it's just, it's quite sad to see. Really. Although, you know, if he's enjoying it and he's, he's still got a bit of passion there, then um, why not? But I don't know, I just don't think it's the best image for him. And I'd, I'd rather see him not doing it because I was doing it. So I'd rather Roy Jones not be doing it as well. Well, I mean, this, we've got to give him some credit for getting back into the ring. Um, and obviously, a lot of people enjoyed it. Some people didn't. And uh, I wouldn't rule him out. I wouldn't rule it out again for them getting back in the ring one more time. Evander Holyfield has been calling out Mike Tyson. Um, just before we end the interview, Liam, Today, uh, Tyson Fury released a video of asking the BBC to remo remove him as a nominee for the BBC Sports of the Year, Sports Personality of the Year. What's your thoughts of it? Do you know what? That's, that's news to me. I didn't know. But what's, what's the reason behind it? Do you know? I believe... Um, I think a couple of years ago when he announced his comeback into the sport um, and then obviously he put in that tremendous performance against Deontay Wilder in the first fight, you know, and then he became an ambassador, ambassador for mental health. A lot of people believe that that was the right time for him to come to be, be a nominee for the sports personality of the year. And I think for it to happen two years later, especially with what he's achieved since then, I think that's probably main, one of the reasons why I believe Frank Warren was very criticised the BBC when two years ago when they never put him as a nominee so I, f I believe that's probably one of the reasons why he's asked to be removed from winning that award this year yeah um, which is fair enough you don't know the ins and outs of it right. but um, I do believe that he, he maybe feels um, that he, he's maybe singled out a little bit for being a gypsy and uh, this, that, and the other, but um, you know, I I would stand by Tyson at the end of the day. He's a, he's a straight up guy. He um he doesn't chat shit. He speaks the truth. If people don't like it, they'll know her. So um, just stand by him on on his decision, and I'm sure he's made the right one for him. Okay, right, Liam. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we um? bring the interview to an end no mate uh, no I'm good I'm all good just thanks for having me on and uh, thanks to everyone for the continued support
world champion soon come. Uh, fingers crossed that's the case. We're really looking forward to that Andrade fight. We're looking forward to speaking to you soon. Um, we haven't seen you in a while, as I mentioned. And I uh, really appreciate your time. And uh, hope you good Christmas and a happy new year. And yeah, look forward to speaking to you soon, Liam. Thank you very much for your time once again. Good man. Thank you for talking to Lights. Thank, thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.